out of your channel. Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, we're still plugging away. It's our first day of 48 hours of midair. Uh, of course, the midair Kickstarter underway. Uh, we are on our way to making our goal, but of course that is only true if we continue to get the generous, loving support of you, the midair community. Uh, I am joined, of course, here today by Chris Matthews, aka Bug Spray, head of Archetype Studios. How's it going, baby? Hey everybody, it's been a long day, but still, uh, still pretty pumped and full of adrenaline. Uh, Chris, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to kick things off right away with uh, subterfuge, but I'm seeing a door here uh, that says "keep out." I'm thinking about going in. Talk me down. <laughs> Talk. Well, that's, you don't want to go in there. If you go in there, there's a lot of lore stuff that's going to happen. Oh, all yeah, the lore stuff. I love it. Well, guys, uh, I think we had an amazing afternoon. Uh, huge, uh, huge pugs. Tons of people. Uh, running around, uh, shooting. You guys saw some third-person action, some first-person action. Uh, hopefully, we got a bunch of your questions asked. Of course, uh, I think a lot of the focus was on competition, so we're going to be setting aside uh, about an hour here just to talk about uh, your gameplay questions, uh, gameplay balance, uh, level level design, weapon balance, all these things. Uh, you know, earlier today we talked a lot about Kickstarter backers, Kickstarter tiers, and I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit. But uh, we're also definitely here. Uh, to uh, to talk about gameplay balance and all that good stuff. Uh, so Chris, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, obviously uh, the game is inspired, it's FPSC, uh, obviously inspired by things like Tribes, inspired by things like Legions. Talk to me about how that inspiration came in, where, where threads are being pulled through, and how you guys decided, uh, and how, how you guys make the decisions that you make. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, you know, clearly this is this is very, very inspired by games like Tribes and Legions, um, and that's intended. And we've all been playing these kind of games for a long time, uh, and we thought, hey, let's go make our mark on the genre. And so it was a very specific decision because, I mean, frankly, this, these kind of games are they're, they're challenging, and they're fun because they're challenging. Um, they also have some very unique elements about them in, in the sense that you can go really fast and do a lot of pretty amazing things that you just really can't do in a lot of other games. But like, first-person shooters uh, typically have, you know, Things like modern modern weaponry, like uh, like AK-47s and M16s and stuff like that, and it's it's hit scan weapons, and it's pretty pretty um, kind of linear gameplay. Like you're walking on the ground, you you can maybe jump or walk upstairs or things like that. But when you look at a game like this, you know you're 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 gliding through the uh, through the air and on the ground. You're moving at hundreds of kilometers an hour, and like pulling off moves that, that you know would be unthinkable in other kinds of games. And that's really what drew us to uh, you know. Trying to trying to appeal to players of this kind of uh, of this genre and this kind of series because it means a lot to us that, that you know, we spend a lot of time you know playing games in this in this genre. So um, when we make decisions about this kind of stuff, we we take a look at all of these kind of games. And so like Tribes One, Tribes Two are hugely influential. Tribes Ascend as well. I mean, um, you know, a lot of us uh, have played Tribes Ascend and. Um, you know, it gets kind of a bad rep, but there are a lot of players who play Tribes Ascend, and so like we were trying to take the learnings that Tribes Ascend had and apply it to midair, and, um, and of course T1, T2, Legions as well. There's a lot of really cool stuff that has been done in all these games, and so when we're considering design changes for that, we, we try to take a look at the history and um, and use our experiences to make the best decisions we can. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So talk to me. So when you guys kind of just got, a, got started, uh, when things kind of got going, uh, what were what were the things that you guys said? Okay, this is definitely what we want to do, or this is what we did not want to do. Like, where where what were the things? Uh, you know, what, what what were the what were the things that that came together that you guys said? Okay, this is absolutely happening, or this is not happening. What are your kind of core uh, design principles? Well, maybe, well, I don't know. You're in here too. Do you want to kind of speak to that a little bit? I mean, you've done a lot of that kind of work. Um. I think you've got you. You're very <laughs> talking about is what I am. Um, so I mean, a, a lot of the core principles that we that we look at are you know there are there are lots of different camps within tribes, right? So if you if you look at uh, like tribes one and tribes two in particular, I remember when I was working on legions back at Garage Games for a little bit, and then as the community project, and we would go to trade shows, 
and people would come up and say, oh, I'd love tribes. Uh, and, uh, and one of the first questions I'd ask, because this, this ended up becoming kind of an issue, is, oh, did you ski? Like, did, did you play the skiing tribes, or did you play the other tribes? And you know, a lot of people who play a lot of the skiing tribes don't think about that. But there's an entire subset of people that would play things um, like bass and never, never hold down the space bar. Uh, they kind of run along the ground or use vehicles or things like that. Um, and so it's one of those things that, like, like when we consider making making our game, like who are we appealing to? What kind of features do they like? And those sorts of things. And so one of the decisions we made early on was, hey, we, we've we've got to appeal to this core base that really loves the base kind of gameplay. It's not necessarily as fast and competitive as some of the, the smaller player numbers or or rule limitations like uh, like LT, where you get like specific weapons and packs and stuff like that. Um, and so we, we said, okay, we want to appeal to both of these things because there there is a you know. A place in our heart for a lot of the fast-paced action of, of LT or light, um, and so uh, so we're trying to you know come up with a good balance between those to appeal to to both genres of people. And that, awesome. That, that, that to me is kind of one, one of the biggest you know to answer your question like that was, that was one of the biggest decisions we made early on. Yeah, that makes sense. So I mean we already and by the way guys if you guys are watching on the Twitch page which I recommend you do a uh, couple things you need to know first thing you need to know Kickstarter button is uh, right here. Click that bad boy, hop over. If you haven't already, donate. If you've already donated, you've seen something you like today, uh, maybe throw a couple more shekels in. If you have not donated, if you don't plan to donate, but you do want to support Archetype Studios and Midair, really all you got to do, and it's going to help move things along in terms of our uh, achievements, is uh, talk about Midair on social. That means give us a shout out on Twitter, give us a shout out on Facebook, send a link in your email to someone who might care about the game. Obviously, Archetype, True Indie Studio, really pouring passion into everything that the guys are doing. If you like the way they think about games, if you like the game itself and you just want to help out, um, it's free to talk about it on social. It's free to share. Uh, speaking of things that are free to do on social, uh, our gracious benefactor and fearless leader, Chris Bugspray, also has put his beard on the line. Oh my uh, if you head over to the midair Twitter, you will have <laughs> the option to tweet hashtag shave the beard midair or hashtag save the beard midair. Uh, whatever we get the most votes for after a period of time to be determined, we are going to follow through. Either we will have a permanent legal beard binding ceremony that will keep the beard on Chris for decades to come, or it will be removed live on stream. Either way, guys, uh, if you're having fun, if this is the kind of activity you like to see in the community, you know, give us a couple tweets. Let us know you're out there listening. Retweet that picture. It's a great way to tell your friends. And if this is the kind of community you like to be a part of, don't forget to donate on the Kickstarter. Of course, if you're in the Twitch chat, also be sure to put your questions in the chat. We're reading those. They're getting passed over. We're not going to shy away from any question. All questions are welcome and open. We're going to have a discussion that's going to get to the bottom, whatever you want to know. For example, uh, cutting right to the quick of something. I know this is divisive in the tribes community, divisive in the shooter community. In fact, uh, our good friend Time Zone 6996 wants to know, will there be health gen like Tribes Ascend, health packs like T2, any form of healing, a repair gun perhaps? Talk to me about where regen and healing comes in here. I mean, well, you should definitely take that one. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. Um, so currently we don't have any. It's kind of like, uh, well, okay, sorry. That's not that's not quite true. So currently the, the only ways to get health back are to um, either use an inventory station, whether it be a deployable inventory station or a base station, which can change your armor, um, or uh, by using the repair by using the repair pack, which is a fresh new addition. Um, but it doesn't really see a, like a whole lot of infield use. So there's um, we're not super big fans of um, just uh, unlimited regen, sort of like TA style where you can sort of regen like anywhere, like in the air, um, because it really messes with our ability to balance uh, cappers and chasers, um, sort of introduces a lot of asymmetry based on the amount of time spent on the map. Um, so, uh, but we are looking at um, other systems like uh, players dropping health and um, uh, being able to regen to like a set amount when you're say on the ground or something. Um, so, <laughs> I think that time zone, let us know if that answered your question. I think that kind of covered our bases. Uh, yeah, no, I, that, that makes a ton of sense. And I think, uh, you know, from what I played of Midair uh, and a lot of what people are talking about, I'm sure what you guys saw today, the game is very fast paced. That's not to say that there isn't an element of base building. There aren't some vehicles in here. Uh, but, you know, this game is definitely fast paced. I think the fastest way to get your health back 
uh, is to go out there, get your face blasted off, and respawn with a full bar. Uh, which, you know, that never hurt anyone. That's good for it builds character. Speaking of getting my face blasted off, how did I ever agree to this beard thing? Uh, you know, it, I, speaking of building character, in fact, Chris. Uh, you Also, earlier today, you may have missed it. Uh, I am about uh, two ounces lighter in the hair department myself. Uh, I, uh, you know, sold my soul patch, as it's being coined, uh, in order to oh. get some donations. I shaved my little flavor saver off. Uh, and if I can do that, surely you can put your beard on the altar of Kickstarter. Ian, <laughs> Ian acting like this is for us. I'm How sure long your is this wife thing running? appreciates it. <laughs> How long are we voting on the beard? I think we want to go until at least we have quorum. Uh, speaking of which, we do have 469 backers on the midair Kickstarter. Guys, if we get to 500, we're going to unlock our first achievement, uh, which is going to be something tasty. It might be lore, it might be art, it might be behind the scenes, it might be that we pin Chris down and shave his beard off anyway. Sky's really the limit, guys, but we do have to hit 500. So again, if you haven't donated, maybe chip in at five bucks, see how you feel later. If you have already donated, please tell a friend. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. It's free for you to talk about on social. And if you believe in indie games, if you believe in projects, if you believe in studios that are open and ambitious, that have been plugging away uh, for, for all of this in their spare time, the least you can do for free is just give it a little tweet, give it a little Reddit, give it a little forum, give it a little love. That's all we ask. Uh, cool. Let's go to another question. Let's see here. Well, I, I think I actually you know interesting something you guys have, you've mentioned a few times, vehicles. Uh, when did you guys decide to put vehicles in? What does that decision look like, and, and how does that affect the game? I mean, we want, we want to tackle that one? Or I um, well, I mean, it's sort, it was sort of obvious, honestly. Given given our previous, like like oh, yeah. Chris said, it, it was our previous um, our previous start conversation starter. Um, is it was it was kind of just obvious that uh, part of expanding uh, the game for you know normal uh, players is uh, giving them think, cool fun things to do and vehicles are like people love vehicles. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I remember, why not? Well, when I was playing Tribes Two a lot back in the day, um, mm -hmm. even though you know you play competitively and like you go play arena, you go play like seven CTF classic or something like that. Um, there's there's something too just jumping into an old base server, hop, hopping in a bomber with like four other people or three other people, and uh, just carpet bombing like people who set up like ten deployables or something, <laughs> and just hearing all of the all the hit sounds and and you know kind of basically reaping the reaping the bounty so to speak. Oh yeah, no, I remember. Uh, I think tribes first tribes was going around on a CD-ROM around my high school, uh, causing a big ruckus. Uh, and, you know, it was, we would all install it, and then we'd all get in a vehicle, you start tooling around a map together, uh, start feeling like the wolf pack. There's nothing really quite like it. It is a, it is a damn good feeling. Uh, I think another question, uh, please forgive me, I did not notice um, uh, who asked this question, but I have seen it asked a few times today. Shotgun, yay or nay? Oh, well, we've got plans. Um, Ooh. <laughs> We've got plans. Um, so the uh, the current plan is that the blaster uh, will sort of have like a, a charge mode that uh, lets it shoot kind of like shotguns. So if you've ever played Halo 4, um, kind of something like the bolt shot in that game, it sort of it, it's uh, gonna work something like that. Um, which is it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Uh, other question coming in, guys. Get these if you have a big question, little question. Go ahead. See if there's something uh, that you want us to, that you want us to talk about. We're gonna we're gonna take them all. Uh, another question coming in um, from NextGen89 with the exceptionally clever spelling that makes me feel old. But we are. Someone uh, told us to go check out this ISP. I replied to them and asked them what the contact info is. So it might be that we can get an Australian partner. If you know of anybody who'd be interested in partnering with us, um, let us know. So please tell us in the Kickstarter comments or things like that, or any other region in general. If you want a server in that region, like please let us know. A lot of our testers right now are centered in the, in the EU, and uh, or someone uh, told us to go check out this ISP. I replied to them and asked them what the contact info is, so it might be that we can get an Australian partner. If you know of anybody who'd be interested in partnering with us, um, let us know. So please tell us in the Kickstarter comments or things like that, or any other region in general. If you want a server in that region, like please let us know. A lot of our testers right now are centered in the, in the EU and uh, in North America, of course, um, although we do have a dev on the team who is in Australia. Um, and of course, there are tons of Australian um, players who would really love to play uh, midair. 
So like definitely like let us know what your region is so that we can help prioritize that uh, when we you know decide on where where our next server locations are going to be. I love it. Uh, cool. Let's see here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, I think this is a great question, uh, and it's something that we can transition to another conversation about. Uh, S1 no what Sin Sinon tri This one guy he wants to know. Uh, how many RNG factors are we looking at? Uh, are we talking about when you fire a gun, this, this, this predictable pattern? Uh, if I hit the slope at the same slope, the exact same speed going at the same time, am I going to potentially go a different direction? How much RNG um, should I predict on? I'm just asking because I need to make sure that I build my shrine to RNGs just to scale. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Honestly, <laughs> um, so sort of like any game, uh, there's a decent amount of randomness. Uh, we try to do things to control it. Um, I mean, you know, so, something as simple as like picking your spawn in a, in a game is fundamentally like most games just do it randomly because otherwise it's really easy to do things you probably shouldn't be able to do. Um, if anyone's familiar with Quake Duels, they know that some at some point they had a system where you would always spawn at the farthest spawn point from someone, and it was just super easy to camp people because you always know where they're going to exactly where they're going to spawn whenever they die. If you know the map well, that's it's just over for them, right? Um, so we use we use RNG for a variety of purposes um, to, inter to introduce like none uh, to put downsides on certain guns like the chain gun. Um, and oh, man, um, and just to and just to provide, make sure the game doesn't always play out the same way in ways that players can exploit and other things. Um, we do uh, when whenever we do it, we do try to put in uh, mitigating uh, factors um, to make sure that players don't get sort of uh, ruined by RNG. Um, so uh, like we we do a thing with the um, chain gun, which as far as I know, no one's sort of does is where um, uh, we we do actually this comes from comes from rendering we we use a special kind of um, random number generator that um, uh, can that sort of makes sure that your distribu uh, this, the distribution of projectiles um, is sort of even over over space so with like a standard like RNG you get sort of like clustering um, because real randomness is, is has clusters, right? Um, and so we work to uh, prevent um, shots from clustering into the same area over and over. We have some hard mathematical guarantees about uh, how often a shot will go in a, in certain directions um, when they're spread. And so we you know we have sort of attention to details for stuff like that, and um, as well as um, just we we have you can see the chain gun has a pretty high fire rate um, and low damage, which is not. It's very, very high um, compared to sort of other games, and we and we do that because it allows us to shoot more uh, projectiles, which allows it to sort of be more um, consistent, even though we we introduce uh, RNG. Gotcha. But if I'm if I'm S1 and I'm trying to get good, if I'm trying to practice, if I'm trying to get my pattern down, um, or for example, if I fire a weapon that's not impacted by RNG, like the this launcher, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get hosed by. By no. a bad roll. No, no. <laughs> awesome, cool. Uh, and I think you know, I think that you guys mentioned something about spawns. Uh, we talked a little bit about Halo, uh, and we talked a little bit about randomness. I think the question behind that for S1, and it's a question in a lot of gaming communities: How much randomness should you really have in your game? What impact does that have on competitive play? Uh, I know uh, doing a little work uh, with uh, 343 on Halo 5 on their Pro Tour. I know that, for example, uh, randomness in their spawn system is a big cause of debate because right now in their pro play, uh, a big part of winning is controlling spawns, right? Controlling uh, pressure and, and predicting spawn patterns. Uh, at the same time, I think they've, they've taken efforts, don't quote me on this, but I believe they've taken efforts uh, to reduce randomness in uh, gunfire patterns. So um, all of this, all of this, because I believe you know the 343 guys really want to take Halo in a more competitive direction, um, which they're doing a really great job with the Halo World Championship. And the Halo and the Halo Pro Tour. Um, so, do you guys have any plans uh, for competitive support for pro support? I mean, I don't want to say the the dirty E word, uh, but could you guys ever see and do you guys ever make plans around uh, midair becoming an esport? Um, honestly, well, I don't know, Chris, do you want to do this? Because sure, yeah. Um, 
So I, our, our philosophy around this is, you know, if we just make the game fun for competitive players, then uh, then hopefully we will see a competitive scene evolve out of the game. Um, we're not going in here saying esports, 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 pushing esports as much as we can, um, and like you know, s setting up you know, tournaments right off the bat or anything like that. It's, we, what we want to do is have the community really come to bat and play. Uh, play games at a competitive level, and then once we see that there's demand for it, then support that as much as we can. Um, we just feel like that's that's better because if people aren't playing at a competitive level, then like maybe we need to, you know, adjust some things, or maybe it's just not a game that will that will do, you know, have like an esports kind of presence. We certainly want that. I mean, I think it's, you know, several of us in the team have uh, competed professionally on on various levels in different games, and so like it's something that is near and dear to our hearts, and we we hope that there is a competitive scene around it. Uh, but we're not going to try and you know force a uh, a square box into a circular hole. I think this is smart. I think this is smart. Uh, here's a kind of, I, I think, a question kind of in that vein, and then we can kind of move away from the topic a little bit, hit a few more areas. Clifford wants to know, uh, have we thought about or implemented anything to address uh, what he sees as potential problems uh, with watching a purely arena FPS, uh, especially something where it's so fast-paced, uh, the Z-axis is involved, there are constant dynamic fights, uh, to very localized, um, compared to very localized conflicts in games like CS and Dota, which I think are a little easier to watch, a little easier to cast. Um, I know earlier today we did some pugs, and I think uh, our shoutcaster was actually doing a pretty good job of adapting to keeping that excitement moving on the go. But I mean, d d is is spectation is uh, is you know having a, a following and an audience is that going into your design decisions, or is that something that you think will kind of come with time? Um, I mean, on its so. Honestly, Guitar Guy makes any spectate tools look good. He's really good at uh, he's really good at catching action in these kinds of games. It's actually uh, kind of nuts. <laughs> um, but um, so honestly, we don't think about it too much. Um, gotcha. like I said, just we, make we, the best game you can. Yeah, we we it's most we mostly just think we'll you know we try to make the best game that we can and uh, you know if if people like watching it, hey, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know. Uh, honestly, like when people talk about, it, I think a lot of times people get hung up on like why this game isn't popular, or, like what's going on. Um, because, like, uh, honestly, as an outsider watching something like League of Legends is totally incomprehensible. It's just impossible to tell what's going on at all. I don't really, I'm not sure I buy the idea that like, oh, you know, it's like so easy to watch. It's just like a maelstrom of particle effects. If you never, <laughs> if you've never played the game before doesn't really make much sense you know people right. people get used to things um and you know people learn uh people learned it how to watch certain games and that's uh you know that's that i think you're right uh now i want to move on again guys i want to i we, we talked about it before we've already asked uh, answered a couple of tougher questions today um you know coming from a marketing background myself from a large company there are certain questions you shy away from. There are certain things you don't talk about for fear that it might come back to bite you later. But as we have promised already on the stream and in previous streams, uh, we're not going to shy away from anything. We trust you guys to be smart. We trust you to listen to our message and work with us going forward. So as we answer this question, I just want to make sure we're all uh, being equitable, entering the marketplace of ideas. It's coming down to the tough question. Brace yourselves. Tyler Market asks, will we be able to teabag? <laughs> Um, so we don't currently have any pro uh, have any plans for uh, crouching, which I would consider a core mechanic of uh, of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I should show you my extended technique. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's a lot of animation work um, for something that would frankly never get used ever. Um, so except a tea bag. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, the, the thing I thought was kind of fun, so we, we were testing out this, um, and I think you saw it in the, the Kickstarter teaser, we were testing out this uh, this mechanic where when you die, you, your camera's actually stuck to the ragdoll's head, and so you can, it'll like, and what it'll do is, like, you can see your, your ragdoll, like, your hands and legs kind of flailing out, but what it'll also do is try and track the enemy who killed you. And so if they flew over the top of you, your head would kind of follow them. So it was kind of a mix between, like, a, a, death, a death cam and... And some other crazy stuff, and and that was it was kind of funny because one time uh, I think Michael when we were testing it would like killed me and then came over and and looked looked over my dead body and his uh, he, what he's also done is create what, what's called like IK uh, like skiing or whatever which basically means that when your character is uh, is up against like an angle 
if you think about how like a, a capsule works or something like that, like basically normally in a game that doesn't have this kind of thing, if you were standing on a hill, like one of your feet would be kind of hovering off the ground because of the way the collision works. But they made it so the, the animation adjusts so your feet are actually angled in the hill. And so that applies oh, nice. to the player's body too. And so when my web or my little camera was looking up, I could see my body and I could see his foot on top of it and it could look kind of like teabagging or he was doing a little Captain Morgan view on top of me. It was pretty hilarious. That's pretty great. I do like that. Uh, time zone here. again, asking great questions. Time zone, I gotta believe that if you're this interested, if you're this involved, if you're asking this many great questions, you've already backed. If you have not, uh, please do so because we would love to get more of your feedback. And that's the best way to do it, by the way, folks. Now is the time. If you have not backed, but you want to influence this game, go ahead, make the jump for that instant access or for that alpha access. The sooner you get in, the more you're going to have an opportunity to shape the game. I gotta tell you, these guys are reading. I, I talk to Chris sometimes, we're both night owls, two in the morning, Mabel never sleeps. And these guys are just always reading the forums, they're always reading feedback, they're always doing something to make the game better based upon feedback. The best way to give that feedback is to play sooner than later. So if you would like to help shape this game, do back time zone. His question is, will there be a laser targeting system or a visual element to help aimed arced projectiles? Um, so... Or do you well, just get good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a lot of um, a lot of gameplay, a lot of gameplay questions, a lot of questions I get to answer. Um, so yeah, we um, we're looking at this. I mean, we know that this is a thing that people like. And honestly, uh, this is a um, uh, a thing that uh, a lot of uh, competitive players um, also use. Uh, they use like scripts so that they can set up uh, things like spam spots where they can. Um, stand like pretty far away from a base, sort of like blindly shoot mortars or grenades or whatever um, over towards the enemy base uh, and take out important assets like turrets and stuff. And to do those that type of thing, you need to know um, you need to know like angles, memorize them. Or they have in, in TTA they use uh, scripts that basically just put a bunch of like points hovering in the air that you can see, and you can just aim at those, and uh, it works. Um, but uh, in an effort to sort of improve upon the state of the art, um, we're sort of, we're thinking of um, uh, you having a, like a targeting laser that sort of integrates that kind of functionality, um, where so you, you can paint you can paint targets and sort of uh, and then they'll put put a uh, marker on your HUD so that you uh, know where to aim to hit a specific target. Um, I like it. So actually, getting that getting that. Uh... Getting that kind of designation, getting that uh, that on that on screen element that's going to help you out, in in itself requires skill to, to pin down. So you're never going to be able to just noob tube your way through. It's going to take skill to get the marker that you need to, to be a little more accurate. <laughs> well, it's not going to take that much. It's not going to take that much effort. It's not you know the most most of the skill in these things comes from positioning and and timing. It's a more strategic um sort of action gotcha 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 um by the way guys uh i don't know if you noticed uh based upon my vacant stare my hand movements but we're also in a game right now playing uh that's the footage that you're seeing up on the screen uh if you have seen inside one of these bases i gotta say a beautiful design we've talked about it today already the clean aesthetic it's something that you're not seeing today in a lot of uh, modern shooters especially modern military shooters uh, and you got to admire the fact that these little creature, good sport, I believe, already backed us earlier today. Thank you again, buddy. Uh, he wanted to know, is there going to be, um, or, yeah, he wants to know, is there going to be a lot of variation in weapons and items uh, for monetization? If so, uh, is that going to hurt us? Um, or are we going to try to go purely cosmetic uh, in the way that, that, we, uh, that we do monetize? Chris? Uh, sorry, so the question was, do we, I'm actually, I'm really terrible at playing and also... If so, uh, is that going to hurt us, um, or are we going to try to go purely cosmetic uh, in the way that, that, we, uh, that we do monetize? Chris? Uh, sorry, so the question was, do we, I'm actually, I'm really terrible at playing and also thinking. So the question <laughs> was, um, do we plan to monetize in other ways besides just purely aesthetic? Yeah, so are we going to do just aesthetic uh, monetization, or um, can we expect to maybe see a few things that would uh, give you an edge in play? Uh, are, are there going to be a lot of weapons? Is the only way to access those weapons through monetization? Um, or is there going to be a firm design, uh, firm divide between the cosmetic and the practical? 
Yeah, totally. So uh, one of the ways we are monetizing is by monetizing our progression system. And you know, the way you should think about this is kind of like buying the game. Um, the, way, the kind of example I like to give is pretend that we have 100 levels. Levels 1 through 50 will allow you to unlock uh, both gameplay and aesthetics. So it's like uh, you can unlock weapons, you can unlock armors, um, you can unlock uh, different items and stuff. Like we're going to add a bunch of cool stuff uh, like, like deployables and like fun grenades and mines and other kind of cool things like that. Um, and so you can unlock those through that first progression system. Now, what you can also do is, you know, for Kickstarter, the $20 tier, which is uh, the Manaborn tier, one of the things you get is a pass, which allows you to uh, basically bypass all progression forever. So if we ever add another weapon to the game, you pay that 20 bucks, doesn't matter. Um, if, you, if you wait until after Kickstarter and you do it uh, for retail, um, then you, you'll have to pay 30 bucks uh, because you're getting kind of a Kickstarter discount since you're getting in early. Um, but uh, but basically, like you'll you won't have to worry about any sort of gameplay stuff ever again. This is this is different from a lot of games because a lot of games will uh, effectively monetize every time they release a new weapon. Like oh now you've got to spend more time grinding, you need to spend more money uh, to get this thing. But we aren't doing that. The the gameplay progression thing uh, is so that you can like quickly get in, quickly start playing. Um, for us, it's kind of a way to monetize up front. Uh, but ultimately, we think it's a great compromise on what is it, what are models that are not necessarily the best for what we for what we like from FPS games where people will get an advantage because they've, they've played longer or have more money or that sort of thing. Um, it, you know, the $20 uh, level, the $30 level is you know, pretty reasonable for a, uh, a first-person shooter, especially of a, of a game of this quality. So we think it's a nice little compromise. Um, now, in terms of other kind of more creative ways of, um, of monetizing, um, we're looking really closely at a lot of the things that games like Dota 2 do. Um, so one of the cool things they do is for their big international tournaments, they, uh, they monetize the compendium. And uh, Mabel, you probably have a little more experience uh, in this than, than I. But from what I understand, right. is, is they have um, they have like player stats and like some some bios and things like that. You, can you explain more about that? Oh, it's crazy, honestly. <laughs> honestly, um, I don't follow that because that kind of thing is not really my scene. Um, mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm sort of just like a real simple. I just want to play video games, um, <laughs> <laughs> like type of action. Um, so I, I have no idea. But yeah, yeah. It's... Oh, I, I was gonna say like the, the moral of the story is like they, they monetize those tournaments in a way. It's like well, you, you know you can still watch the tournament, um, you can still like you know support your team and post on Twitter whatever you want to do. But if you want those extra little features, um, which is kind of nice, you you spend I don't know how much it was, but I think it's like six or eight bucks. Uh, some of that goes into the tournament pool, and some of that goes to Valve to uh, to continue the development of. Uh, of things like Dota or the Steam platform or things like that, and so uh, I'm not saying that we're going to have a compendium like that because you know, of course, it requires kind of a uh, a more involved um, you know, tournament and that sort of thing. But it's it's things like that that we find really creative and a nice way to allow players to contribute to the games that they play without like you know getting in the way of their fun, right? Um, and you have any suggestions on that kind of stuff, like neat ways we can monetize in that kind of way? Like I'd totally say to suggest it in Twitch right now. Go to the forum, suggest it on there, Twitter, Facebook. We're looking at all those places. If there's any doubt in your mind, guys, you know, I think uh, something that, you know, you see from a lot of indie teams, they'll say, oh, you know, we're very passionate or, oh, we, we believe in this. Now, I don't want to say that any indie team is less passionate than any other indie team. Uh, but, you know, guys like Chris, guys like Mabel... Uh, guys like Jordan, they've been in the scene uh, talking about developing a game like this, talking about developing other games that have ultimately culminated in this for eight years. That is more than the better part of a decade. Uh, so if there's any doubt in your mind that this, these guys, their heart is in making a great game first, uh, they'll figure out what they need to do to keep the lights on. Uh, but if you would like to help them keep the lights on, again, I cannot emphasize this enough, that little Kickstarter button is right there, and it will take care of everything that Mabel needs uh, to learn how to read the compendium that comes along with Dota 2. You can save a Mabel. It's exciting. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, let me know, by the way, if, you have, if you've answered, um, asked one of these questions and we've given you a question uh, and you haven't quite got the answer that you're looking for, hit back. We don't want to give uh, flimsy answers. We don't want to give slipper answers. We want to give answers that satisfy or at least give you the information that you need. Uh, so if we haven't answered your question to your satisfaction, let us know. We will circle back and take care of that for you. Um, here's a very flattering and interesting question from Immortal Chaos. It said, hey, by the way, want to say hi, by the way, game looks great. Cannot wait to play it. Uh, by, well, if you can't wait to play it, all I'm going to say is instant access. Uh, grab that tier, hop in, you're going to be playing sooner than you thought you would be Immortal. Uh, but he wants to know, uh, is closed beta still really 12 months away? From what he's seeing, the game looks very playable. Well. Yeah, so. Well. I mean, <laughs> Maybe we'll my... just like, oh, yeah, what's up? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so my answer to that is, you know, every day we're still, like, you know, what we've done is like really, really polished uh, what we could to get this ready for Kickstarter, to take the demos that we needed to take for the trailers, to make sure that on stream this is stable, has some good features for Observer and that sort of thing. But honestly, and Mabel, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this, what we have here is probably something like 30% of the game that we want to make. Um, it, does that sound right to you, Mabel? Like, it, it's, if I, if you had to, like, kind of Maybe toss like, out a number? You know, I, yeah, it seems, it seems close. No, I mean, honestly, if you, if you break down the features, we have uh, a decent portion of the core set, but that's not really, you know, that's not really what it sells there. That's not exactly the product we want to make. You know, we don't want to make just this, like, small, uh, you know, this small, cool set of features. I mean, we really, you know, it's a... Uh, it's great, but there's a lot more to uh, making a well-rounded experience. Right? Oh yeah, definitely. And, and you know, when we talk about features, that's just one part of the equation, right? Like we have optimization, yeah. we've got backend oh, services, <laughs> a lot of the stretch goals and things that we want to achieve. Things like the the custom map making system for for the community, um, like pickup matchmaking. Those kind of things take some time to implement and implement right. Because um, when you say the word matchmaking, it's like, oh yeah, that's that's awesome. We should totally do that. It's simple. Let's you know do an Elo system, good to go, right? Well, it turns out that if you do something you know the correct way, the way that like really makes sense for your game, um, it's not necessarily so simple. Um, and so a lot of that kind of stuff is just time, time to iterate, time to design and test over and over again, um, and really like think think clearly about some of the the problems you're trying to solve and the features you're implementing to solve them so um it's those kinds of things that end up you know being a little a little more uh opaque when you're talking about like like things that you see um but are really really important and one of the reasons why things look so polished right now is because we spend a bunch of time uh on the quality on the feel uh, making sure that things are polished and and so we hope to carry that forward as we build out the game and and again that just takes time and effort and energy cool uh another question coming down the pipe uh is um, and I think this is a this is an interesting question. Uh, without going too deep, because it's a huge uh, it's a huge topic. How likely is it uh, that there will be AI bots in the game? By the way, I need to step away from the keyboard for just a moment. Answer the question. I'll be right back. AI bots. Uh, wow. Yeah, we actually I didn't really thought of that one because like Tribes Two had that. They had some AI bots. I think they are the really the, the, bad. <laughs> You want to have some really basic stuff for the tutorial, right? I don't think I saw yeah, much Yeah, the... I mean, they're, it's basically, I, they're basically just things with pathfinding at that TBH, so really, there's no real intelligence. Honestly, it's, so it's very hard to make AI uh, play this kind of game correctly. Um, I have no idea. I'm not an expert on AI. Uh, it would be a lot of time and resources um, to, make, to make it happen in, like, sort of a general game and have them sort of approximate a real player um, it's just, it's, you can imagine when you think about the movement, uh, it's very hard. Um, but, uh, you know, we do want to implement, um, things. I mean, we were, honestly, we were just talking about this two days ago, Chris, um, with, uh, like the shooting gallery and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, which... Uh, sort of give you ways to uh, work on specific scenarios um, in your own, you know, in your own time without mindlessly um, sort of sitting in a server and trying to mid-air incoming cappers or, you know, whatever. Ooh. A shot. That was good. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I mean, and this is a, a very multiplayer game, right? And when you think AI, you think single player, uh, or you think like maybe a MOBA or something where they're sending out AIs for you, or maybe like uh, like Titanfall had, a, had some AI stuff going on. Um, oh, Titanfall AI. Yeah, but, it, <laughs> but if you think about like what our team has the resources and time for, like AI is probably lower on that list, except for maybe things like the shooting gallery. Um, will you see AI in games? I mean, I, I can't say no for sure because you know, hopefully this game goes on for many, many years and we get lots of resources to do things that people uh, are requesting. And maybe that's something that's really critical and important for the game at, at that point. Um, but right now, like, we've got a whole lot of other priorities uh, centered around getting this game out, keeping the polish high, uh, and things like that. So. I like it. Uh, sorry about the, uh, the brief interlude there. So uh, here is another question, uh, and I think this is a question uh, that is going around Kickstarter right now and is a really interesting question. Is there going to be a playable demo uh, going around during the Kickstarter? Uh, so I, I answered this in chat. Uh, 
but I'll just I can restate it quickly if you want if you want. Uh, so I said that we're not really planning on having one because we don't want to take away our developer time. Uh, since we're such a small team, we don't want to divert resources to making something that will be playable for a month rather than a month worth of work. Absolutely. Yeah, guys, at this stage, I think uh, everything counts. You know, there, I think the thing that's been going around that people have been asking about, uh, uh, I don't want to name names because they had a, a kind of a rougher time with their Kickstarter, but, um, you know, there, there are some games where I think proof of concept wise, you really do need a demo to wrap your head around it. And I think there is a, you know, get games that came out of the shareware era, um, which, you know, is, is kind of the same area that we're gunning at, are used to having that kind of access. That being said, uh, you know, we answered the question earlier about the beta being 12 months away. Um, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds kind of weird to say this, um, but we're on a, on a pretty tight time frame. The, the, um, the 12 months to beta, you know, that's, that's actually pretty tight, all things considered. So um, putting a demo out, publishing it, keeping track of it, and then making sure that that experience is what we want for you guys, making sure that we can take. And the other thing, too, is, you know, it's, it's kind of irresistible. It's, it's almost like it has it's like the siren song. As soon as you guys start playing, as soon as you guys get in there and start crawling all over everything, we're going to want uh, data. We're going to want to know what you guys did, what you didn't do, what you did like. Uh, and there comes a time in game development where that's a, that's in, that is a priceless, very important thing to have. Uh, and there's a time where you kind of need to get all your ducks in a row first. I think, uh, I think that your money that you would donate to Kickstarter is better spent uh, allowing us to, uh, to really, really put, a, put some polish on the game uh, so that when the game does come out, uh, you know, you'll have that option. Of course, the game will be free to play when it comes out. So if you are gun shy, you don't necessarily feel like backing it. What we encourage you to do is, of course, hang out with us. Uh, keep watching these live streams. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to see a lot of gameplay. Um, if you want earlier access, you can jump in at those higher tiers. But of course, if uh, neither of those things sound quite right to you, uh, but you do want to help the game out in some way, what you can do is talk about the game on social, spread the word, get somebody in there. Uh, that maybe can give you a little bit more insight. Maybe even go for that uh, buddy bundle. That'll help you actually secure the game at the $30 price range instead of the $35 for um, early access to the beta. What's nice about that is you and a friend can go in together and compare notes. Uh, next question from... Oh, this is my favorite. Um, I, I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly, but I always like to say Pomplice. Pomplice. <laughs> His question is, uh, are there any words to say about the lore? Ian, I believe that's a question for you, Fred. That is a oh question my for God. me. Um, <laughs> this is what you've been training your entire life for, Ian. This I know. I, I just, everybody wait lifetime for a moment like this. Uh, so, Pomplice. I'm so happy it could be that asked. Uh, if you scroll down the Kickstarter page, uh, you're going to see something that says, uh, you know, that the mechanics of the game, the mechanics of a multiplayer game, uh, are usually divorced from... Uh, what you see in the single player. That's just kind of it. So, for example, when you're playing Gears of War, uh, you know, you can go into multiplayer, and Marcus Phoenix, who is the uh, protagonist of the game, uh, who needs to live through the game, can get chainsawed in half in multiplayer. We make the concession because that's how multiplayer games work. Uh, so Chris uh, and the team, they we started talking uh, and, and batting around some ideas, and there was an interesting challenge, and an idea came out. Which was how do we make uh, how do we make multiplayer how do we make a story that works with multiplayer how do we make a story where dying and respawning is part of the story where it's not a conceit uh, that we're making that we're kind of avoiding with story how do we make it actually part of the story how do we make this gigantic amazing world with all of these different environments part of the story uh, we've come up with something uh, that I think is really cool um, that I'm really proud of that I hope the team is really proud of. Um, that's a lot of fun, and uh, of course, it also blends. Connection lost. Connecting. User in your channel timed out. Channel switch. Channel switch. Hey guys, I'm uh, in the processing uh, process of fixing that. Give yeah, me one moment. I'm looking to see if he's having trouble connecting. Disconnected.
connected. Hey, Davey's behind me. Oh, okay. All right, let, let us know if you can hear us now, Davey. And that is talking. the entire story of midair as presented <laughs> in 30 seconds. Let me know what you guys think. Please let me know. I need feedback on every single detail. I didn't skip anything. It was all in there. Uh, but first, but uh, seriously, guys, uh, sorry, sorry about the disconnect. Um, we're at 470 backers. I don't want to spoil anything, but I have heard a rumor that if we can make it to 500, that one of the things we're going to do as one of our first achievements is trickle out a little bit of that lore. Um, stay tuned, complice, over the next 48 hours um, as we start to fill those details in, as we start to let you know more. I think you guys are really going to dig it. Um, and just like the rest of the game, uh, you know, we want your feedback, and we, if we need to tweak things, we're going to tweak things. That, I think, is what we can tell you about. Does that sound about right, Chris? Absolutely. Cool. Um, let's see here. So, uh, let's see here. Bah, 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 bah. Um, here is a great question from Elk. L E C L E E five five five. He uh, would like to be. Uh, he's thinking about backing at the progenitor uh, tier, which, by the way, ooh, ooh, what's that? Is that part of the lore? Yes, it is. Uh, which, of course, uh, at five thousand dollars, which would be amazing. Holy cow! Yeah, uh, that would get him uh, pretty much everything in the augmented mana weaver. It would also make him our highest donator to date. Uh, guys, I can't stress enough. We need to put the peer pressure on this fantastic person and let them know what an amazing idea it would be <laughs> to do this. Um, in fact, if this goes through, I will. We'll just we'll dive into lore if that's what you want, baby. We'll talk about anything you want. But um, he's asking, of course, um, because in the progenitor tier, um, you get the option to design a custom weapon skin, um, the the design to uh, the option to design a custom projectile. He wants to know. Uh, how and when uh, do, would we start to allow uh, them to start contributing art? When do those discussions begin with the development team? Uh, when can he start to get his feet wet working on, of course, uh, the custom weapon skin, the design, uh, the custom projectile, um, and all of the other great uh, contributions he'd be making in the tiers uh, that are, are below Progenitor? Well, certainly we would start that conversation immediately. Um, what we need to do is figure out exactly what you want to do. Um, and then what we're going to do is like work together on when it's going to happen in the timeline. Um, but we will definitely reach out immediately after Kickstarter to make that initial connection, have a, have a couple of meetings, uh, discuss what you'd like to do. Um, and then we'll have some meetings amongst ourselves where we figure out, okay, you know, this makes sense to do, um, you know, in a couple of months, or maybe it's immediately, or uh, maybe it's closer to release. Um, but we definitely want to make this happen, and whatever you end up designing will be available upon release. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if you want more specifics, feel free to ask another one, and we can answer it for you. Very cool. Uh, by the way, um, thank you very much for your consideration. I can't tell you how much it means just to have somebody think about donating at that level. It is amazing. If you guys are like this, if you're like someone like um, at Eckley, Eckley555, um, if you're like this and you'd like to start to dabble in game design, or maybe you're already a game designer, I don't want to presume, but you're looking to contribute to the game, this is a great way to do it, guys. I cannot emphasize this enough, what a responsive, um, involved, and passionate dev team. Uh, if you get in there and you do donate at the $280 level, you're going to get to design your own personal spray. Not only is it going to be in the game for you to use, not only is it going to look awesome, not only is your mom going to be so proud, but you're going to get your feet wet in game design if you haven't already done it already. You're going to learn a ton. Uh, you know, when we were at Instant Action, Chris, Jordan, Mabel, all these guys um, were starting to get their feet wet, and they were doing it by playing around with options and ideas like we're offering in the Kickstarter um, and, you know, coming from an indie background, um, they could probably teach you more than you thought you'd ever learn about uh, making a game, making textures, making audio packs, all these great things. Uh, they'd be ready, willing, and eager to teach you, and you're going to learn more in an afternoon than you could read in any stinky old book. Take that Full Sail University. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think, I, I hope that answers it. By the way, I'd love to know, um, actually, 555, uh, I'd love to know how you... Dude. Oh, E.C. Lee. Perfect. Oh, yeah, I'm reading the chat now. E.C. Lee, I'd love to know, by the way, if you could tell us in the chat how you heard about Midair. We'd love to find out how we're reaching people. Um, but by the way, guys, you know, uh, E.C. Lee, whether or not he's going to donate at this level, higher level, lower level, whatever he does, anything works. Um, and I bet you dollars to donuts this is something that E.C. Lee heard about through a friend. So, um, again, if you have already donated, if you haven't, do if you haven't donated, if you have donated, if you've backed, if you're thinking about going higher, whatever it is, the thing that you can do right now for free that will help the project the most is just talk about it in social. 
Um, help us discover the next E.C. Lee. Help us discover the next person who's going to donate $10 even. Every little bit helps. We can't reach those people uh, if you don't tell them. You know, obviously, like today there was a huge game announcement. Uh, how does Midair stand out in a world of battlefields? It's through a passionate, dedicated community like you. So if you've donated, make your money go further by sharing it with your friends. Help us hit those stretch goals um, and just get out there, talk to the community. Keep those questions coming, guys. Keep that Twitch chat popping with questions. I think we've had a ton of, uh, a ton of great answers, by the way. I got to give it to Mabel and Chris for being super, super on top of it. Um, is, there, is there anything, um, as we're watching gameplay, by the way, I, I, by the way, huge cred. We've already gone through three maps. So different in their design and their feeling. I'm hearing birdsong. I feel relaxed and zen-like as I get blasted. <laughs> um, talk to me, you know, how many, what kind of, what kind of environments, what, 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 how many different environments are we looking at? What inspires, uh, what inspired the kind of more whimsical look of midair um, over the traditional kind of rock opera look of, of other games in the FPS genre? Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, do you have your mic? Uh, Davey's actually in here with us. He's the guy who's running the stream right now, and he is uh, one of the art leads on our team. The other is Santeri. Um, and so he's actually well equipped to answer this question, but I don't know if he has his mic set up uh, yet, so let's find out. Yeah, you guys should be able to hear me. I just don't want to overpower you guys on my amazing mic. mic. I, don't, I don't think you actually are coming through. Here, why don't you just use my headset? Get real close to Chris. What's that? I'm here. Hear me? Okay, yeah. now I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. No, I work. I just forgot to hit the button. All right, um, uh, well, first of all, before I answer your question, Ian, well phrased, as always, smooth talker, I mm. wanted to touch on one thing that I noticed uh, that I'm sure some of the streamers noticed, but uh, whenever I get close to Jordan, something happens to his shoes. <laughs> can, can, can you explain this to me? Jordan, where are you? Well, you just, you can't handle me when I got my shoes on, man. The shoe kid. The shoe kid can't be stopped. Where, where, where are you? I, I must take a look at your case, man. Uh, I'm in... Where are you? I'm in the base. Uh, I'm on the red tower. Red tower. Alright, um, as for the question, um, we... First of all, from a gameplay point of view, uh, having the kind of palette which we do uh, leads to very crisp imagery. Being able to see, actually see what's happening around us and um, being able to make more informed channels. decisions. And here, oh no. Damn it, Shanks. Killed us. User Shanks is in here, so he's not channel. listening. Oh, he's Anyways. listening. <laughs> oh, he's listening. <laughs> what a player. You can't Really? You guys can't hear me? Uh, First you guys can hear me way too much, then you can't hear me. Alright, hopefully this is better. But uh, take a look at these shoes. I, is, why are is you this, special? I don't understand. Is this my present for Michael? <laughs> what, he what? promised he'd give me something for replacing the blaster noise. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh you know, look Whoa. at all the kicks, man. Sounds, so, so, so apparently they can't hear Davey at all. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, so, basically... Um, yeah, the, yeah. Mike, Michael put a little Easter egg for Jordan. Uh, gave him big shoes because he kept on talking about the shoe kid. It's part of his little alias. It's pretty, it's pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, Davey, why don't you just use my, my headset real quick? Just talk. Is ta is ta uh, can you talk real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. What's up? Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. We'll, 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 Davey's working on his mic. Uh, we'll come back to that question in a second. Oh, no. Hold on, I'm having issues. Oh, 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 hold on one second. Davey now disconnected from TeamSpeak and he's coming back. Just, uh, let's just go to the next question. Davey, hop back into the TeamSpeak. Yeah, no problem. Here. Uh, cool. So, uh, big question coming in. I think, can you guys hear us? Just confirm. Yeah, they can hear us. Well, great. Um, someone asked, by the way, I know we've already talked about this a little bit. Uh, what engine are we running? We're running on Unreal. Uh, Chris, can you? I know you already talked about it a little bit earlier today, um, but in you know maybe like rip little short answer, uh, talk to me about why this game is running on Unreal. 
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, and actually, uh, yeah, give us Sony. Give us Sony. You've got a really good really perspective. Yeah, you're working with yeah, Angular on a daily basis. Um, um, they want you to go and jump into your perspective. From your perspective. Mm. Uh, it's all about the tools. Games. I mean, we make the games, but we make the games using tools. I mean, Real has pretty amazing tooling. Um, it's well. I mean, for us. Apparently, it's there's not, a really bad echo right now. Just a heads up. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Mike, you're gonna just... Now I have now, now I have issues with Jesus Christ. What's going on? Never had problems before. Alright, he's back. Alright, he's back. All right. Technical difficulty. Can we, technical can difficulty? we do this? Yeah, they should be able to hear it. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, we have incredible Twitch delay, so I guess we'll just find out in like three hours or whatever. Um, so, uh, engines, well, let's run through it. Um, so, Unreal has uh, pretty great tooling for um, what we need to do. Um, and we make, the, you know, our primary interaction with the engine is we, we interact with the tools that it provides us, and Unreal is. Um, just second to mind what it offers us at our uh, <laughs> amount of money we can put into it. Um, so it also, uh, we also really value the um, source access that we get, uh, that we got basically up front with, with Unreal, uh, not having to uh, go through any uh, license, you not have to go through any licensing, any, any like call us um, lines. It's uh, really just a huge, a huge deal for us because um, any any sort of game where we have really precise requirements for anything, um, in, in this case, case uh, the gameplay has some very precise requirements out of it. Uh, there's really just no way to do it without um, source code access. Uh, so that was a, a really big deal for us in, in choosing GUI4. Yeah, when you're awesome. talking about like like those requirements, right? It's it's the physics, it's the networking, it's the the things that are core to the game that that really make it stand out from yeah. from others in the genre. Where I mean, you know, for for the times they they might have been great, but you know, technology has moved forward, techniques have moved forward, and uh, and so what we've done is is really make a lot of improvements that could have been done with any other engine. And for the artists wow. in particular, I, I know that they've they've been like when we moved from Unity to Unreal. Man, they, there was a massive speed increase in terms of the kind of assets that they were able to produce at you know at certain rates and and the quality of those things in the game. Yeah, that's a big deal. Sweet, 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 sweet. Uh, cool. Well, guys, keep those uh, questions coming. We can broaden it out. Really, anything that you guys want to know about uh, in midair, anything that you guys want to know about the team, where we're going, what you're getting when you're backing. Um, all that good, sweet, delicious, savory midair flavor. Uh, let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I do want to give a quick shout out. Let me pull up my list. We've had uh, quite a few people. Um, we're up to 470 backers. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to thank everyone who's donated, uh, everyone who's endured listening to me talk about donating, listening to me talk about uh, hitting up your friends. It really does, it really does mean the world uh, to Archetype Studios, and we can't thank you enough. Uh, let's see what else. I, I'm not seeing a ton more questions in the chat. What is up next on the docket, by the way? What, uh, what so, comes? So actually, Davey, uh, we're going to probably spend a little time making sure his mic works for the next stream, but he's going to be doing uh, uh, level design next. I love it. How can you beat that? Um, today, we've already had a great, uh, we sat down with Santera, we looked at some 3D modeling, uh, went behind the scenes and the guts there. Um, it's amazing how fast the guy can work. Uh, then we, we did some coding, which was great. I understood um, about as much of that as I thought I would, which I'm not going to reveal to you what that <laughs> percentage is. Uh, and of course, we've had a gigantic, uh, had a gigantic day uh, full of gameplay, which I think, uh, you know, yeah, we're not going to be bringing you guys a demo, but the proof is in the pudding. We've already had a, a lot of comments about like, wow, this game looks like it's ready to go into beta. Um, and that was that was really just you haven't seen anything yet. Uh, again, contingency plan asking the tough questions like what my favorite color is. I'm gonna have to go with purple. It's like red and blue put together. Um, it does make me happy. Oh my. Do you all have oh. to answer this one, or is it just you? Uh, he said me. He specifically oh, asked wow. me, and I, I'd appreciate good. it if you uh, if you didn't uh, insert yourself into this conversation. I just, well, everything <laughs> is about me, by the way. I'm the <laughs> self-instated CEO of Archetype Studios. That's it. That's it. 
Uh, cool. Uh, I think, um, let's see here, blah, 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 capes. I know we said that if we hit uh, our stretch goal for, of, uh, of $500 million, we'll definitely be adding uh, real fabric capes to the game. Real, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, actually, it spawned some interesting conversation uh, when people get oh. on bringing it up. Uh, and so, I don't know, we, it, it might be that you might see something like that or maybe some, some cloth elements for the game at some point. But, uh, Ooh. but yeah. No like guarantees. It. We still have to investigate the tech. We got to make sure it's not going to make the game, you know, lag for a bunch of people. So like, we'll, we'll we'll see. But we're looking into it. We're looking into it. I like it. Well, you guys can just you guys can just Mabel can just learn uh, the Cry Engine. You guys transition. Everything will be great. I mean, yeah, I guess. Frostbite like... is the future of midair. <laughs> I like I like it. Mabel doesn't even say no. He's just like ah, sure. <laughs> New engine. Who cares? Uh, how's Davy looking? I don't want to. I don't want to stomp on Davy's scene. Uh, no, I think, uh, Dave, are you ready to go over to the next stream? Probably need about, about five, ten minutes to get prepped, but then uh, we can come back pretty quickly. Awesome. So, guys, that's it for me for tonight. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. If you could think of anything else for me to shave aside from my flavor saver, let me know. Again, <laughs> hit up the Midair Twitter account. Uh, you're going to see a little image there. It's going to tell you how to vote for whether or not Chris should save the beard or shave the beard. Weigh in. Uh, if you are enjoying the community, if you're enjoying these conversations, guys, I got to tell you, uh, it's, it's, it's the usual suspects. It's the same crew of great people that are making the game, the same crew of great people that are playing the game, and the same crew of great people that are keeping us happy and asking great questions that have been around since 2008. You can't get enough of it, and the only way to keep it going, this is the time. It's been eight years. We've been building up to it. This is our moment. Please donate if you can, and if you can't, share on social, share on email, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your kids, tell your wife, whatever it takes. Let's just get some eyeballs on this. Uh, and yeah, until tomorrow, that's me. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you then. Whee! Thanks, everybody. Hi, right, guys. Thanks for coming. Oh, the cord. Why didn't I unplug the cord? Woo! <laughs> 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 Disconnected. <laughs>